Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is on a basic series parallel circuit. So here we have a simple series parallel and we're given all the resistances and the voltage. So in a series parallel when you're given all the resistances normally what you do is just solve for the total resistances. And it helps in the beginning to just redraw the circuit. Um, it just makes it so much simpler and and sometimes people find that tedious but the truth is it helps you to to work through it or understand what's actually going on so that's what I'm going to do as I walk through this circuit um, we have our voltage here so I'm just going to draw that so we have our our battery and nothing there and our resistor one Now, at this point, we have um, a piece across here, and you can see that this piece here is in parallel with this, this resistor. So it helps to just leave our 60 ohms where it is. So there's our 60 ohms. This one is 75 ohms. And add up these two that are in series and make them one resistor. So the 110 and the 215 we have 325 ohms here. Now we can see that the 325 ohms is in parallel with the 60 ohms. So then we can deal with that parallel piece. And we solve for this parallel piece by using 1 over 1 divided by 60 plus 1 divided by 325. And with your calculator, we do the, div the bottom first, so 1 divided by 60 plus 1 divided by 325 equals, and then you do the x to the minus 1, okay? So second function, x to the minus 1 equals, we end up with 50.6 ohms. So 50.6 ohms. And that's, I don't have a red pen, that's this parallel piece, is the 50.6 ohms. So then we can redraw the circuit again. And we can say, all right, so here we have 50 point, whoops, 50 point 50.6 ohms, and down here we have our 75 ohms. So essentially what we've done is we've just taken this circuit and sort of pulled all the resistors together and found out that we end up with this. Now, in order to find the total resistance here, we just add up these two resistances. So our total is the 50.6 ohms plus the 75. So our total equals 50.6 plus 75 equals 125.6 ohms. Yeah, 125.6 ohms is our total. Okay, so there's our R total. Now, having R total, we can solve for I total. So I total equals E total over R total, which is 100 volts over the 125.6 ohms. So 100 divided by 125.6 equals 0 0.796 amps. So 0 0.796 amps equals I total. Okay. All right. 
So let's just transfer that information. We have I total equals 0 0.796 amps and R total is 125.6 ohms. Now usually when you're working with series parallel and if you're pulling it together you take the information back and forth between the two circuits. So what we know here is that we have our total current. So we can say alright through this circuit which is essentially what we're looking at here we can say that the total current running through here is running through this sort of pulled together circuit of what we're looking at. So noting, knowing that the total current is running through here we can solve the voltage through the 75 ohm resistor. So let's just do that. So E1 equals our 75 ohms, so I times R. So the current through that resistor is our total current, which is 0 0.796 amps, multiplied by the resistance, which is 75 ohms. So voltage 1 equals and once you've, well actually we don't need, really need to do it in this case. So 0 0.796 times 75 equals 59.7 volts. So we have 59.7 volts cross resistor 1. All right. Now when we look at this all right. We see that we've solved for the voltage across here. It's 59.7 volts. Okay. We know that the voltage across here is 100 volts. So this piece from here to here, and if we call this point A and call this point B, that's the same as the point from here to here. So we can say that that's point A and that's point B. So if we know that we have 100 volts from here to here, we must have 100 volts dropping across here. So if we have our 59.7 volts here, we can take our 100 and minus the 59.7 to find the voltage across there, across the 50.6 ohms. And the voltage across this 50.6 ohms, so the voltage that we find across here, has got to be the voltage across this resistor. It also has to be the voltage across these two resistors. Okay. So, we know the voltage here. We can just use this parallel piece which we solved for, which we said was the 50.6 ohms, and that's the easy way to do it, right? Just use that 50.6 ohms in order to find what the voltage is across there. So let's just do that. So I'm going to call this voltage, yeah, let's do it here, voltage for the parallel piece. And that's current times resistance. The current we're using is the total current, so the 0 0.796 amps, times this resistance, which is the sum of all of these resistors. So times the 50.6 ohms. So the voltage across the parallel piece then is our 0 0.796 times 50.6 ohms, which is 40.3 volts. Okay, so that's the voltage across the parallel piece, 40.3 volts. Now, 
Again, as I've already said, the voltage across here plus the voltage across here has got to equal our 100 volts. So let's just check and see if that's true. So we have 40.27, which is close to 40.3, added to 59.7 equals 99.97. So that's good enough, all right? So then the voltage across the parallel piece, which is here, is the 40.3 volts. If we have that voltage across here, that's the voltage across resistor 2. So we can find the current through resistor 2, which is the voltage across the parallel piece. Actually, let's make that more clear. Let's say that E2 then is the 40.3 volts, which it is. So just to be clear about that. So I2 equals E2 over R2, which is 40.3 volts divided by the 60 ohms. So 40.3 divided by 60 equals 0 0.7, no, 0 0.672 amps. So 0 0.672 amps, which is I2. Okay. And we already know current 1 because that's the total current. That's, th that's the current that's running through here. Okay. And again, in series parallel circuit, what happens is the total current is running through here. And then it gets to this junction and it splits. And we end up with one part of the current running through here, just like water through a river. So there's I2. And the rest of it flows through here, just like water through a river. So this is I, 3, and 4. Okay. Okay, so what stage are we at here? Solve for I2. So we can solve for the current through this piece. All right. We know the voltage, which happens to be the voltage across the parallel piece. So the voltage from here to here is also the voltage across here. So knowing that, we can solve for the current through this piece. So I, let's call it 3 and 4, equals that voltage, which is the 40.3 volts, so the 40.3 volts divided by this total resistance, which is 3 to 5 ohms. So we have 40.3 divided by 325, which equals 0 0.124 amps. So 0 0.124 amps. And that equals I3 and I4. So the voltage through those two resistors, right? Or the current, I should say. All right. Now we have the voltage across resistor 2. Let's solve for the voltages across resistor 3 and resistor 4. So remembering that running through this piece, we have current 4, actually 3, which equals current 4, which equals 0 0.124 amps. If we have the current running through here, and we have the resistances for both, we can find the voltage across both resistors. Okay? So I or V3 equals IR divided 
just a psi <laughs> distracted by something there. So V3 equals IR, and that would be R3. And our current through that piece is 0 0.124 amps. And R3 is 110 ohms. So V3 equals 0.124 times 110, which equals 13.64 volts. Okay. And the voltage across resistor 4, again, I times resistor 4, same current, 0 0.124 amps times 215 ohms. So V4 equals 0.124 times 215 equals 26.66, 26.66 volts. Right. Now the thing is we said that these two voltages have got to equal the voltage across resistor 2 which was 40.3 volts, right? So we know we have 40.3 volts here. So let's add these up. So 26.66 plus 13.64 equals 40.3. There we go, all right? So the voltage across this one so we've solved sol for all the voltages. I believe we have all the currents. One, two, three. Yeah, one is I total. Okay, so we've solved for that. Let's just solve for power total, which is E total times I total, which is our 100 volts times our total current, which we solved as 0 0.796 amps. So we end up with 79.6 watts as our power total. There you go. And if you solve for the individual powers of each resistor, it should add up to the 79.6 watts. All right, so there you go takes care of that and I hope you have a really great day.